Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My name is Dr. Abdul Adamu from Data Analytica. I work at the Department of Business Administration, Nasara State University, Kefi, Nasara State, Nigeria. This lecture is on stock valuation. We are going to run some le series of lecture on this, and what we are going to cover in this series of lecture. First, we are going to look at stock and its classification. Then we are going to look at stock valuation. First, we we'll look at valuation of common stock using different model: the discounted dividend model, the discounted cash flow model, and the comparative company analysis. Under the discounted dividend model, we are going to look at one period, multi-period dividend discount model. We are going to look at the Gordon growth model, or what we call the constant growth model. We are going to look at how we can value non-constant growth stock, how we can value no dividend firms. Then here we look at the comparative valuation model. Then under this we look at the price earning multiple approach and the economic value added approach. Then after that we are going to look at the valuation of preference stock. Then we we'll look at security analysis, fundamental and technical analysis briefly. Then we we'll conclude the part with efficient market hypothesis. So in this part, we are going to look at uh, the stocks and its classification. A stock is a general term used to describe the ownership certificate of any company and a share is a stock certificate of a particular company. A holder of a particular company shares is normally called a shareholder and we have two types of stock or shares. We have a common stock or ordinary shares and we have preference shares or preferred stock. A common stockholder has voting right while the preferred stockholder don't have voting right. Preferred stockholder have guarantee dividend, that is when uh, the company make profit, their dividends are guaranteed before any other shareholder. A common shareholder is subordinate to all other types of equity. Earlier I said preference shareholder will get their dividend first. If any uh, remain of the profit, then the common shareholder or the common stockholder will be paid. That is why they are subordinate to all other types of equity. They are entitled to residual profit, meaning if the profit remains after the dividends of uh, preferred stockholders are paid, then the common stockholder are entitled to the residual profit. There are also there are other types of names that will come called common stock, either common shares, ordinary shares, or voting shares. They can vote and be voted for. They can vote for elect the board of directors, or they can contest for board of directors also. They can vote for decisions that as outlined in the article of the association by or by the bylaw of the company. Then potential stockholder either options grants or convertible preferring stock may give each holder the right to acquire ordinary stock. A common shareholder have certain rights. The first is the preemptive right the preemptive right is the right to purchase on a pro rata basis new issues of common stock or convertible security. Meaning if the company decided to issue a new shares, the common shareholder have a preemptive right, preemptive right to buy those shares on a pro rata basis. The purpose is just that First is to prevent the management from issuing many additional shares and purchasing those shares itself, and also to protect the stockholder from dilution of 
value. You know when new shares are issued, the tendency of value of shares of those that are owing to be diluted is there. Then they also have right to dividend when there are residual profits. The common shareholders have right to dividend after all other shareholders have been paid and they have right to company's assets in terms of uh, liquidation. When the company is folding up, the common shareholder have the final right on the company asset once every other liability has been met. And they have the right to vote, as we said earlier, they can vote for board of directors or any other issues. We have different classes of common shares. Some company may issue two or more classes of common shares. And this is to preserve the control over the company, especially those that found the company. If, for instance, Dangote, when they went public, they can decided to issue two or more classes of uh, shares. So this is to preserve the control. As you see later, when Google went public or Facebook went public, they have two or three classes of shares. One class for voting shares and another class for non-voting shares or with a lesser voting power. They may have a class of shares, maybe for the founders, that have 10 votes per share. And another class that may not have a vote at all or one vote per share. For example, Google has three classes of shares. One, the class A, which is traded using the ticker GOGOGL, has a one vote while the class B has 10 votes and it is not traded publicly. It is called the founder shares. These shares is owned by uh, the founder of Google, Sergey Brin and Larry Page, Eric Smith. Then we have the class C which has no vote which is traded using this ticker. G -O -O -G. So the ticker is just to show that this shares has one vote, this has no vote, but the prices of the shares on the stock exchange is not, does not have any stock differences. Then Facebook or Meta has two classes of share. We have class A, which has one vote, and we have class B, which has 10 votes. This class of shares, uh, the class B, is hold by is not public traded. It's held by the founder Mark Zuckerberg and some insiders, and this has carries ten votes. So, Zoom also have two classes of shares, class A and class B. Class B has ten votes, and they are, the the holder is the founders of the uh, shares. So if you look, like I said earlier, for Google, class A and class C, there is no clear differences in their prices. For Google, the class A shares, there are over 300 million of it. The class B, there are 45 million, 843,000 of it. And class C, 327,556,000. Uh, as of January 2021 but you can see still those that own 45 million slightly 45 million which is page and brain that which is about 51.5 percent of the voting rights so at any point in time even if everybody that owned class A agreed to vote on an issue they cannot change the decision except the page and brain do not agree on that issue. Once they agree, they control everything about the decision of the company. So despite the difference in the voting right, 
Different classes of common stock usually enjoy the same right to the company's profit. So when the company make profit, their dividend they receive, they are mostly the same. Preference shares, the shares, there are shares in company's equity, and holders are entitled to fixed dividend amount, and the, their dividend are normally paid before the common shareholder. That is why they are called preferred stock. And they have preference also in terms of liquidation, they have preference on the claim of the company asset before the common stockholders. They have no voting control over the affair of the company and they are also called hybrid security because they have the characteristic of both the common stock and the bond. The features of preference shares, like I said earlier, they have preferences in asset to the asset upon liquidation. They have fixed dividend payment. They are non-voting. The shares can be called before maturity because we have we can have redeemable and irredeemable preference share. For the one that is redeemable, the company can decide to call it before it reaches maturity. We can have a convertible or non-convertible preference share. That is preference share that you can convert to common stock. Then the dividend could be cumulative, cumulative in the sense that in, in the year where profit are not made, if profit are made in the following year, the dividends that were not paid the previous year will be paid along with the, the present year's dividend. Then it could be non-cumulative, that is, the year where dividends are not paid because there is no sufficient profit. Those dividends cannot be paid if profit are made in the subsequent year. It could be participating, meaning they can participate in, uh, in some cases in the decision of the company. Then, finally, we talked about advantages of preferred stay. There is no dilution of control, meaning if a company issued additional shares, it will not affect the uh, preference shares holder. Then, no obligation for dividend. The company uh, will have to pay their dividend if they make profit. If they don't make profit, if it is a non-cumulative share, there is no obligation for dividend. And the terms are also flexible. If the company liquidates, they have a secure position since they have first claim on the company asset before the uh, common stockholder. And finally, they have fixed income, meaning their dividends are fixed and they are paid once the company made profit. So this is the end of uh, this lecture. If you enjoy this lecture, you can consider subscribing to our YouTube channel like our video and give us thumb up and also help us refer this video to other people thank you for listening